how much of a possibility do you think that is? I that would be unprecedented, frankly. Um, it's never happened that I'm aware of. And certainly in my nine years in the General Assembly, it's not happened. I mean, there's a lot of there's a this is a bipartisan budget. You know, we worked um, across the aisle. There's there's things in this budget for for all the, for the entire Commonwealth. It's a historic investment in public schools, brings down the cost of living, improves access to health care, and it really creates opportunities for families to thrive across the Commonwealth. It would uh, for him to to veto the entire budget based on this one two billion dollar deal that he's been working on um, in Alexandria, this monumental deal. It would be un- it would really be unprecedented. I, I if he did veto the budget, budget, what would come next? Well. It's uncharted territory, but it, we would have to, uh, we have until, you know, we have to have, uh, our Constitution says we must have a balanced budget. We we must have that budget done by July 1st, our, which is the fiscal year. We do a biennium budget, so this is a two-year budget. It can't go, like last year, remember, uh, we had this, what we call the stump budget, or the, the stub budget, I guess. The intervening year budget. Yeah, it's the, what happens is at the, at the second year, there's some changes being made and we, and that you can, you can push that off a few months and that's what happened last year. Maybe you're trying to mimic the Congress, you know, they've, they've, they've had yet another <laughs> budget before the government shuts down this weekend. But it, it does seem to me that there's a lot going on in the legislature. The governor has vetoed any, did he veto any of your bills? He, yeah, you know, I've never had a bill vetoed and, and you've been there since 2017 yeah nine years and he this is my third governor fifth speaker and i like to say the third uh, building that we've had down there now we finally have a purpose built general assembly building it's and i recommend everybody coming and visiting and seeing the historic capital too it's beautiful it's a beautiful location okay enough of the commercial (laughs) but i have had i lost a i lost a great bill uh, my constituents gave to me it was a little english ivy ban bill that allowed localities to ban english ivy if they so choose which is an invasive uh, which plant. is a, right and uh i it came from my constituents they've been tackling invasive plants in their gardens and in public spaces throughout mount vernon and especially along the parkway you will see the english ivy growing up the trees grows up to 90 feet tall and it why did he veto it he usually says a, sta- a statement of where each bill he vetoes why did he veto the English Ivy ban bill. His statement indicated that he didn't want it to be uh, a lo- uh, just a local option if it was that it should, he kind of intimated that it should be a statewide ban, but I don't believe that he would support a statewide ban, but I'm going to come back next year with that statewide right. ban bill. So we'll no, see he'll be he a lame duck next year. So he'll be, Yeah, this will be his last year next year. In addition to your bill on Ivy, this fight over Alexandria might impact other pieces of legislation, including your bill that would finally create a legal market for recreational marijuana. Possession of small amounts of cannabis has been legal in Virginia since 2021. So what exactly would your proposed legislation do? Well, my bill is a market is a marijuana uh, marketplace bill. And um, what it does is it, it, it will, you know, we've legalized marijuana three years ago. And what we didn't get accomplished, though, at that time was creating the marketplace. So it's legal to to use marijuana at, at, for adult use, but it's illegal to buy it or sell it. So really, it, it makes it impossible unless the marijuana somehow uh, magically appears. You really can't. You really can't use it. So we have a three billion dollar illicit market. Uh, it's you know on all all over Virginia. You can you can buy it illegally, and you've got to remember drug dealers aren't IDing for age verification. They're not they're not checking products in a lab for purity or potency. They're not accurately labeling them. They don't use child-proof packaging. So and your bill would have set up a, a regulatory uh, framework. regimen framework to yeah. do it. What would the if if the Virginia did that? Other than cutting into the illegal market, what would it mean for the state if you did it? And why did the governor veto it? Wouldn't it? Mean well, he hasn't vetoed it, of, it yet. Oh, but if oh. He, which well, if which he hears this program, he might. Yeah, I I I do think he will veto it. Uh, it should stand on its own merits. It shouldn't be a part of any arena deal. Um, but unfortunately, it, it looks like it may be. You know, the the bill is uh, 
is the idea is obviously to get rid of the black market and also to recognize the high price paid by the black communities and the war on marijuana use. We had a 2020 report, a JLARC state report, that showed that, that black individuals were arrested at three and a half times higher than white ones for possession. And so this bill is really uh, important for its dedication of restorative justice after decades of unequal and, let's be frank, really destructive drug enforcement. And I crafted this bill with, uh, with Senator Rouse. So there's a Senate companion bill that's also been... Um, but the governor said earlier this week he has no plans to sign the cannabis bill. Can you take us behind the scenes on those talks? Is there a path forward for this legislation? Well, I haven't... He hasn't told me that. I haven't heard from him, and I... And, um, and I think it would be. I think it's. Uh, I think it's a mistake not but, to, yeah. to. It seems well. If you want to, if you're going to have marijuana, wouldn't you want to regulate it? Exactly. The district can't because of stupidity in Congress. But you want to regulate it would mean hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue to help pay for the cost of the regulation, right? Right. And we estimate that by the third year there would be a billion dollars of revenue, and the a tax, year a billion dollars a, billion a year dollars or collected or. All yeah. together. Oh, wow. For retail sales. And so, and this is, this is a, you know, this is not uh, a, he said, I, I saw, he said cannabis store in every corner, which this bill does not do at all. The, this bill is, does the opposite. In fact, it, it license gives out 350 licenses, which is less than what you see. I think we have over 400 ABC stores in Virginia. The ABC, I mean your liquor stores. Right, and style. you don't see them on every street corner. They're, you know, in my district uh, in Mount Vernon and Franconia, there's probably uh, less than a handful, maybe three or four. So we're talking about that kind of number. Two or three would be in my district. So if the governor does veto the bill, what will it take for a legal market for recreational marijuana to be established in Virginia? We're just going to, you know, no, we're going to keep coming back two more wait years. Wait till the governor's gone, right? We've got to get a Democrat that's in the, the in the. We have to get a Democrat governor, and that's what we're going to we're going to keep fighting for. But the other big thing, but I did get look. This bill got some, got a couple Republican votes. I mean, and and I think we could tweak it a little bit next year and get some more. So it it's not it it can be a bipartisan effort. What about skills games? Uh, these uh, for people who don't go into Virginia, there are these slot like machines and truck stops in various places. What does the skills game uh, do in terms of regulation? Because uh, they they exist, but they're not regulated either. Is that the way it works? And the, your legis- the legislation and the would would uh, would uh, regulate them. But again, the governor may veto this bill also, or has he yet? I'm not sure. No, he hasn't vetoed that yet. He's ve- so far he has 91 vetoes. The record is 120. He already has the record for for his four year term, and he still has another year to go. Uh, but that that bill, the skill game bill, is something that I'm not very supportive no. of. You're, I should say you're yeah. chairman of the House Gaming Committee. Yeah, the House ABC gaming Subcommittee on General Laws, which is includes gaming, marijuana, oh. gambling, all your so vices. You're glad you, I'm the vice chair, vice. Do you want him to veto <laughs> this bill? I well, I, I think you know the he it needs to amend it. And the governor has a lot of power in Virginia because he has line item veto. He can he can go through a bill, and and that's one of the things he could do with the budget. The budget is a bill, and he could put that arena back in the budget as a as a line item, if you will. Um, so he that I'm hoping that he will take the bill that I passed. I had a substitute that we laid over the original skill game bill. Was that passed. one to, to require gaming machines to be held a uh, standard closer to casinos? Yes, and a okay. lot more, um, a lot more, uh, re- you know, uh, things in it that would make it uh, safer for for so people won't be stuff, cheating stuff that they well, took out of the bill in the compromise. Yeah, most of it was taken out. Not everything. It, it did move the needle a little bit. If the, if the governor's going to revise your skills bill, or if he's going to send down an arena bill, you're only going to meet one day, April seventeenth, to address any unfinished business from the legislature. Does the governor have to have all of these bills or a new arena bill? When did? Before the seventeenth, or or on that morning, can he say, "Hey, I've got this"? No, no, no. It has. I think that the April 9th, I think, is the deadline. It's a thirty days from the date uh, of of the okay. end of session. So you have about a week or so yeah, we'll to look at any week. of its changes. Yeah, so we'll so, know April 9th 
all these vetoes and whether he's going to try to revive the arena and change the skills bill. Or And he's already started vetoing bills, so we do. Yes, so I've it's not those. going to all happen at one time. I mean, there's too many bills for him to, uh, yeah, if he's going to veto this many. And he's amending some, and he's signed a, a number of them, too. It looks like he's signing the... Well, some people think he wants to do all this because he's going to run against Mark Warner in 2026. Do you think that's a... Yeah, no, that's certainly be- a possibility. I mean, I, I think he's trying to angle for vice president with, with Trump right now. Ooh. Well, here's a call uh, from Brian and Alex. 